The Honorable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And to begin, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member from Pontiac for sharing his time with me. And it is my great privilege to have been able to welcome him to our committee. And I know he's going to do a fantastic job in deliberations on such matters as strengthening the role of the Parliamentary Budget Officer. Mr. Speaker, I was honoured today to second this motion, this very important motion, tabled by my colleague, the Member of Parliament for Parkdale High Park, to reaffirm strengthen and extend the critical mandate of the Parliamentary Budget Officer, or the PBO. <clears throat> One of our primary obligations as parliamentarians is to scrutinize government's spending plans as outlined in budgets, estimates, and plans and priorities. This duty applies to all members of Parliament, regardless of political affiliation, opposition, and backbenchers alike. Two successive studies by parliamentary committees have identified significant failure by MPs in delivering this duty. The unanimous report I had the privilege of contributing to tabled just this last fall titled Strengthening Parliamentary Scrutiny of Estimates and Supply calls on the government to take actions to improve the capacity of MPs to enable more meaningful scrutiny of estimates and supply. This report recognized the important role played by the Parliamentary Budget Officer in this process. The report noted an OECD finding that best practices for budget transparency require, in quotes, parliaments have the opportunity and resources to effectively examine any fiscal report that it deems necessary. The committee heard testimony from an array of Canadian and international experts who concurred that the PBO is a key player in improving and, implement and supplementing the capacity of MPs. Dr. Joachim Werner, Associate Professor of Public Policy at the London School of Economics and Political Science, testified that in order to improve scrutiny of estimates and supply, and in quotes, the first is to protect and enhance the role of the Parliamentary Budget Officer. Internationally, the PBO of Canada is very highly regarded, and it's certainly a major change in the degree the Parliament of Canada has access to an independent highly professional research capacity, end of quotes. He added that the role of the PBO could further be further strengthened if made a full officer of parliament with total access to all relevant information. Dr. Werner shared that his views are premised on international experience with such officers in other jurisdictions. What is the PBO and where does his mandate arise? The PBO was created in 2006 with the enactment of the Financial Accountability Act. His mandate is clearly prescribed in law to, in quotes, provide independent analysis to the Senate and the House of Commons about the state of the nation's finances, the estimates of the government, and trends in the national economy, end of quotes. He is also mandated to undertake research and assist committees in the review and analysis of estimates. Clearly, the PBO must have ready and open access to financial and economic data to deliver these duties. MPs and committees have found this information and advice indispensable to their scrutiny of government spending and estimates. Mr. Speaker, accessibility to all information has regrettably been a matter of ongoing contention for the current PBO. He was ultimately forced to seek a court ruling due to access denials. While the official opposition was pleased that the OGO committee report recognized the valuable role of the PBO, New Democrats, in a supplementary report, also called on the government to take immediate action to make the Parliamentary Budget Officer an Officer of Parliament. Valuing his role, we also recommended that the PBO be legally mandated to report not just to the Finance Committee, but also to the Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates with respect to its estimates work. This call is reflected in proposed legislation tabled by my colleague, the MP for Parkdale High Park. Our call is endorsed by Canadian expert Dr. David Cook, professor of the School of Public Administration at the University of, of Victoria, who testified in quotes, first, I would make the parliamentary budget officer a full agent of parliament to assist parliamentarians and committees. I think the role and mandate of the Parliamentary Budget Officer needs to be clarified and strengthened by making the office legislatively separate and independent of the Library of Parliament, 
thereby operating as a full agent of Parliament. End of quotes. Mr. Speaker, the important work of the PBO is highly regarded in Canada and abroad. In fact, next week, the Parliamentary Budget Officer will welcome the OECD Network of Parliamentary Budget Officers to Ottawa for their fifth annual meeting. PBOs exist in Sweden, in Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, Ireland, Australia, and even Korea. The OECD network of PBOs are scheduled, as I said, scheduled to meet in Ottawa to continue their, del del me, their deliberations on improved parliamentary oversight of fiscal stimulus, deficits, and risk management. Mr. Speaker, it's most regrettable that they are arriving in this country at the very moment in time where there's a dispute over providing important information to the PBO and where we are facing a vacuum in accessibility to his important expertise. Other countries provide analogous examples of providing support to elected officials. For example, the Congressional Budget Office in the United States of America, created in 1975, provides budget committees and Congress with objective information about budgetary and economic issues. As mentioned, Strong support for an independent parliamentary budget officer has been voiced by experts who lauded Canada for the initial establishment of the office of the parliamentary budget officer. Dr. Werner spoke of the need, in quotes, <laughs> to protect and enhance the role of the parliamentary budget officer. A number of countries are creating similar institutions and the parliament in Canada has really been at the cusp of the development. Internationally, the Parliamentary Budget Officer of Canada is very highly regarded, and it's certainly a major change in my view, at least in the degree the Parliament of Canada has access to an independent, highly professional research capacity. He then added, in quotes, I believe that some adjustments are possible to the legal framework for the Parliamentary Budget Officer. In particular, this role could be strengthened, or the status be strengthened, if he were a full Officer of Parliament. Moreover, steps could be taken so the Parliamentary Budget Officer has total access to all relevant information. In the past, I believe there have been incidents where departments have not been quite as forthcoming with providing information to the Parliamentary Budget Officer as perhaps they should have been. But overall, I see this as a very positive development and I see some scope for strengthening it also on the basis of international experience. So there we have it, Mr. Speaker even international experts are watching what is happening in Canada, what will happen with our PBO. New Democrats have long supported the establishment of an independent PBO. New Democrats stood in the House and voiced their support for the creation of a parliamentary budget officer in 2006. We remain in support of the PBO, regrettably now under attack by members opposite. It would serve members opposite well to be reminded of their own previous support of an independent PBO and the value of objective analysis. The Prime Minister in 2006 said, in quotes, such a body would ensure that the government is genuinely accountable for taxpayers' dollars and that we maintain fiscal discipline. The Finance Minister in 2006 said, governments cannot be held accountable to par if Parliament and Canadians do not know the real state of public finances. In fact, the Conservative 2006 electoral platform endorsed the creation of an independent parliamentary budget officer. How attitudes have changed. Time after time, the PBO has faced delays or denials to his request for financial information. As I mentioned, he was forced to, to take the matter to the federal court. Now, in the face of his imminent termination, the government has dragged its feet in ensuring his timely replacement. The process for fulfilling the PBO office took 18 months last time. MPs now will face review of the coming budget and estimates absent the PBO's analytical support. The simple answer is presented in this motion, extend the term of the current PBO. Mr. Speaker, what happened to the government members who once proposed support for the PBO? I can personally attest to the value of his reporting and the assistance of his office in my participation in the Parliamentary Committee and my review of estimates. We're meant to be stewards of the public purse. We can choose to support institutions that ensure informed decisions. An independent PBO reporting to Parliament offers that window. I call on all members to support this motion to make the PBO a true officer of Parliament. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Essex. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I've been listening uh, uh, to interventions from the NDP today on their... Um, on their uh, opposition day motion 
Uh, the member and several of the NDP members have mentioned uh, about the existence of parliamentary budget offices, if you will, or some equivalent to that uh, in other countries, but they don't talk about the form in which uh, uh, or the structure in which or the relationship which they share either to parliaments uh, or legislatures and the executive. Uh, in England, for example, which was mentioned, I think, by one of the other members uh, earlier, uh, it's housed inside the Treasury Department. Uh, here we choose in Canada to house it under the Library of Parliament. Um, there are many models and they can all work. And in this case, uh, if you judge the independence of, of the, uh, of the uh, current parliamentary budget office, uh, he has been highly critical of the government, hasn't lost his job. Uh, his appointment comes from a nonpartisan committee. The Prime Minister makes the appointment, but the, but the nominees are all chosen that way. So isn't it in fact uh, that there's a, a variety of options, but this one is actually independent, in fact better because it's not housed in the Treasury Department, I would think, and it's providing the material necessary uh, for uh, members of Parliament on both sides of the House uh, to hold governments to account. Well, member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, indeed, uh, far be it that I would suggest that everybody copy what is done by the Government of Canada at this point, moment in time. I can only attest to the um, expert, expert, uh, expert testimony before our committee when we undertook a review of how we could strengthen the role of the PBO and support the role of MPs in reviewing estimates and supply. And resoundingly, all the experts made exactly the same recommendation, that they recommended that we make the Parliamentary Budget Officer a full Officer of Parliament to ensure his independence, and furthermore, to uh, ex expand on his resources so he could fully build, uh, build our capacity to review the, the estimates and supply. Some, some comments. <clears throat> the Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Mr. Speaker, I wonder if the member could provide some uh, insight in terms of when she says that the parliamentary budget officer should be a full parliament uh, or officer of parliament, if she can provide some insight in terms of how she would uh, envision uh, uh, such an individual actually being uh, hired. There's different ways in which one could uh, do that, and I'm interested in knowing uh, how uh, she believes the ideal way of hiring uh, an independent officer of the of House of Commons would uh, be. Ms. Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member for his excellent question. Of course, part of the way of ensuring that, in fact, the parliamentary budget officer being made a full officer of parliament would be to ensure uh, his integrity and respect, his or her, would be to ensure that we actually have representation from all the parties in the House in the selection and review process. So that would be my recommendation. But I think the first step is to get the government to agree that uh, the parliamentary budget officer become a full officer of parliament and then uh, reach out to the other parties and discuss how that process may proceed. I would suggest that we should take advantage of the meeting this, this uh, month with the OECD network and seek their advice on how we might move forward. Questions and comments. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge River. Speaker, in 2006, New Democrats and Conservatives worked together on the Accountability Act it was this partnership that allowed it to make it pass in a minority parliament. This legislation would have never have come about without the NDP's cooperation. Since then, sadly, the Conservatives have found and used loopholes in the law to skirt accountability. Loopholes that we are trying to correct today. So I, my question to my honourable colleague is, does she believe the fact, believe that we do need to fix the legislation that we have before us and that the Conservatives, the government members and the NDP need to continue to work together in cooperation to fix this legislation and to strengthen it and to make it better so that the Office of the Parliamentary Budget Officer can actually have true clout and real teeth to continue doing the great work that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has been doing. Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for her question. <clears throat> I'm afraid that I would want to reserve my judgment on whether or not we need to strengthen the legislation. That's exactly the issue that Parliamentary Budget Officers referred to, uh, to uh, the courts. Um, his reading of the legislation, and frankly my reading of the legislation, is that he has the full power to, to uh, command that the information he's requested be provided. I think that what needs to be strengthened is building his budget and making an independent full officer of parliament so there'd be less interference. Resuming debate, the honourable member for 